Thanks for clicking on to the 61st edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope everybody is well and enjoying their weekend. Of course, we're now into month number two of autumn 2023 and it's starting off rather warm in many parts of the world. Also, we have some interest in cold to speak about as well. You can see here one of the strongest heat cores anywhere on the planet at the moment is over the central United States. We've also got some exceptional warmth across the southeast of Australia, extending all the way to Alice Springs in the centre. We've got some heat across, say, you know, a large swathe of Europe, Eastern Europe in particular, but also we've got Western Europe seeing some very warm temperatures indeed. The current temperatures actually, as a record, you can see here, we've got mid 30s in France, we've got upper 30s in Spain, as you can see, and the southeast of the UK, where into the low 20s we could see temperatures reach the mid to upper 20s towards next weekend but in yesterday's video i did explain a little bit of perspective with regards to the, the, the heat expected this week versus past october hot spells and it's really quite interesting even back to the early 1900s you know scotland had a temperature as high as 27.4 celsius and they, uh, you know, yeah, we've been there before, um, as stated, um, you know, previously. So do check out uh, yesterday's uh, video. I did do one um, yesterday. It typically takes Saturday off, but uh, I thought there's quite a lot of things to discuss and look at. So um, I did that yesterday. So like I say, be sure to check that out if you haven't already done so. If you haven't already done so in terms of subscribing to the channel, please do so if you're interested in weather and meteorology generally speaking if you've got an interest in not just you know the type of weather we have but the reasons what uh, behind that type of weather is uh, you know I, I endeavor to try and explain to you the bigger picture of things and we're going to look at winter this upcoming week as well so something to whet your appetite um, speaking of winter and wetting your appetite this was a tweet that i just seen here by our friends at World Climate Service on Twitter showing some very interesting charts for December, January and February. Now, there is, has been quite a lot of uh, mention about uh, the longer range models uh, suggesting a lot of blocking, uh, you know, this upcoming winter season. And that's kind of counterintuitive to a couple of things here. Uh, you know, the, the Indian Ocean Dipole, which is uh, warmest waters in the west versus the east of the Indian Ocean. That is quite strong, and it looks as if we're reaching close to levels of 2019. Now, it's argued that back in 2019-20, we had, of course, the supercharged polar vortex, and one of the byproducts, one of the reasons behind that uh, super-fueled polar vortex was actually the, the record-strong positive IOD, and that would be a little bit of a concern. Also, a little concern would be the level of warmth we'll see during September. And also, of course, the El Nino. Now, we'll look at El Nino in a second here because it's it's been a very interesting past few months with regards to El Nino and the you know the coupling between ocean and atmosphere. There has been somewhat of a, a lack of response, atmospherically speaking, versus the sea surface temperatures and also those uh, those uh, Kelvin waves running underneath the ocean, warming, uh, you know, the subsurface uh, part of the Pacific Ocean. We've seen, um, you know, easterly winds at times. We've not had these strong westerly wind bursts, which are required to start getting the engine going with regards to El Nino and that coupling, you know, of the walker circulation, starting to see, uh, the, you know, the upward motion over the Central Pacific, and of course, that uh, rising air hits the ceiling of the tropos uh, tropos pause. Actually, it's reaching the top of the troposphere, and then the air gets uh, fanned out, and then of course it descends over the areas of colder waters, and that's been slow to develop this year, and that quite often is the case actually. And it looks as if it means that uh, essentially we're not going to see that super El Nino that some of the models indicated. Looks as if it's going to be a moderate to strong El Nino. And it looks as if as we press towards the December period, which typically, um, you know, sees the peak to El Nino's, um, it looks as if we're going to start to see. It, it's all about the position of that warm water versus the, the cooler water in, towards the western portion of the basin here. Um, but anyway, so this is December off the CAN SIPs. This is the mean sea level pressure anomaly, by the way. 
And you can see here that we've got somewhat of a blocking across Greenland and the North Atlantic. We've got the negative over Europe and North America, which is quite a cold signal. But look at this here for the month of January. Very strong blocking Scandinavia across the um, across the Greenland here. We've got that the strongest positive. So it's an east-based block over the northern hemisphere. And with the amount of blocking we've seen towards the the second half of, of spring through the summer and even now i think could be possibly a, a telltale telltale sign that we have got the potential increase in for a blocky type winter here and of course we do want to at this time of the year see that strengthening of the pv over the arctic region here we want to have that source of cold air of course you don't want to weaken it too quickly there's been a lot of models indicating that we do have a slightly stronger then weaker polar vortex and you want to build that resin you want to have something cold up there to actually draw once the blocking if the blocking was to develop here but that's certainly a very interesting look for january and even february it looks as if it even strengthens further that folks would be you know i know it's a long way out but that would be almost like you know a sniff at 0910 if you ask me but i, I, I thought i would show you that to start off the video just to kind of get your taste buds going if you're a lover of cold winter weather but this is the month of october so far day one of course and we'll look back at uh, september we've had a lot of warmth around the planet there is pockets of cold as you can see here southern greenland west and east united states parts of eastern siberia where we're starting to see the snow start uh, to to lay down parts of southwest china uh, kazakhstan into the upper portion of the Middle East, also parts of Africa, quite interestingly, uh, so cooler than average here overall. But, you know, it probably was globally, as well as for Europe, as well as for the UK, you know, uh, warmest, if not second warmest September on record here. But in today's video, I want to look at a couple of things, a couple of interesting things. Of course, we had the flooding that took place in New York City. We've seen Libya, we've seen Greece, not one but two major um, flood situations here. Of course, the, the sea surface temperatures around the world are, uh, you know, in our lifetime, we've never seen water temperatures to this magnitude of warmth across the world. They've been steadily warming, you know, particularly so in recent years here, whether it's down to the Hunga Tonga eruption in January 2022 or not, I don't know. But it's interesting here, certainly the warmth over the eastern portion of the Mediterranean, um, sorry, the Pacific, it looks as if it's kind of slightly weakened. Um, and we're certainly not going to the levels of 2000. And, and uh, I don't think it's going to the levels of 2015 or 97. Uh, which was of the scale warm across the far eastern portion of the Pacific. But what I want to see for winter is this core of warmth peeling off the South American coast and now focusing over three, the region 3.4. And this is actually the, 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 the area that's measured in terms of, uh, of where we're at with the El Nino. We're seeing the cooling around the maritime continent, as you can see here, to the east of Australia. That's that positive IOD signal here with the warmth of the west cool to the east here. We've also seen flooding in parts of Thailand. Uh, we've also seen it in parts of Java, as well as record-breaking heat. Now, the flooding across parts of Thailand, we've seen it in uh, Phuket. We've also seen it in Bangkok. I think there was a bit of a MJO pulse that ran through the continental maritime region and it enhanced the convection over this region of the world. So around here... We've seen some of that um, intense flooding rainfall here, and we're now seeing the, according to, you know, the Bureau of, um, of Meteorology in Australia, this is outgoing long wave radiation here, and this is the period for the upcoming seven days. You can see here the sinking, so the 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 yellowy orangey colours represent a lack of cloud cover. This is basically a, a measurement of cloud cover that the, the satellites are picking up on. And areas where you see the blue indicates that this is where cloud cover is present. So we're seeing the thunderstorms erupt here and we're seeing that convection running east. Now, this is going to enhance a westerly wind burst and try to 
give the atmosphere a bit of a kick with regards to the, the coupling of the El Nino here. So warmest waters here, of course, the far east of the Pacific. We're seeing quite a lot of activity now over the, the west and central portion of the Pacific. Now, this may also help, by the way, down the road to lead to some blocking within the Arctic region here. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what takes place here with regards to that. Um, but yeah, we, there's a few interesting things going on here. Tornadoes appear to be down in the last 75 years. Hurricanes, of course, in the last 40 years has been on a decrease. We're seeing so much noise at the moment with regards to um, you know, weather becoming more extreme. Now, we've seen it in New York in recent times, but it looks as if um, the media is focusing on JFK. Uh, where they're saying that it was the wettest 24-hour period on record. But we've got plenty of evidence to suggest that we've seen you know, other episodes of extreme rainfall. A lot of it's to do with the out-of-date sewage system in New York it needs to be updated, needs to be upgraded. And, you know, of course, with all the concrete in the buildings, there's nowhere for that rainwater to go. So New York City is quite susceptible to seeing flooding. But it's interesting how climate gets attached to all these things. Greece is another place that has seen extreme rainfall in the past. And, of course, with warmer sea surface temperatures, we are increasing the level of moisture within the atmosphere for extreme rainfall events. But as, as I've said in yesterday's video with regards to potential warmth this upcoming week for the UK, we've been here before, even back in the early 1900s, we've seen it. Interesting tweet here, 30-day running mean global temperature normally 78 at present. Uh, this is R Dr. Ryan Mowey. Obviously an abrupt spike in temperature over the last several months. Um... And he goes on to say, isn't the climate change, but what is it? So could it be the three-year La Nina switching to an, uh, an El Nino? Could it be the Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption? Very, very difficult to say, but you can see this gradual trend up and the sharp spike in recent times with regards to the uh, global temperature here. What has caused that sharp spike in temperature? Let me know in the comment section below it what you may think. Have you got an opinion on it? Have you not? That's, this spike here is actually the Super El Nino of 2015-2016. Now we've got the drop off. Of course, we had the three year La Nina, but uh, it's very interesting to see uh, some of the stuff that's going on. I'm just trying to show you the big picture here, checking out on the tropics over the past 45 years. Not much in, in terms of a trend. The running 365 day mean is 0 0.2 Celsius for now. Looks like the ongoing El Nino tropical temps are on par with 2015 and a bit behind 97. So you can see here, this is the temperature within the tropics over the last 45 years. And you can see here that really the tropics aren't overly stood out in terms of a temperature anomaly, which is quite interesting here. I'm, as usual, I'm running out of time and I don't unfortunately have time to do a second video on this today. But just some food for thought, really, uh, with regards to the climate situation, because we're getting hammered at the moment about the earth warming up to an extent where it's frightening the life out of people as if we're about to all burn up in a matter of days or weeks or months. But it's interesting what's going on um, with regards to the warming. There's no getting away from the fact that the earth is a lot warmer than it, than it was before. This is an interesting one here, talking about actually some sort of a warming within the core of the planet that's being released to the, the, the bed of the oceans. And actually that has been warming up. This is very simplistic terms, I know. But actually the warming has been caused from internally within the earth itself and then being released into the oceans uh, that is the cause of the warming. So that, that's an interesting take on it. I've seen, of course, uh, Joe Bastardi's idea with regards to the, the increase in volcanic activity as well. That's another interesting point of view. Or is it CO2? Let me know in the comments section below what you think of the contents of what I'm talking about here. But unfortunately, I've run out of time here. And uh, like I said, I don't really have the time to, to do another um, second part of the video. We'll maybe discuss this in the days and weeks to come with regards to the global temperatures here. We'll look at that in a bit more detail coming up, I think. 
So anyway, stay tuned. Looking at winter in the coming week, and we'll also look at how warm it's going to get as well. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.